Hey everybody, uh, we're here again at uh, on podcast, the On Microsoft podcast, where we talk about all things Microsoft. I am Kareem Anderson, your host, and I'm joined with the world's greatest co-host, Arif Bacchus. Yeah, and we'll be talking about uh, Microsoft news from the week, uh, and then we'll be hinting at or touching upon things that go into next week. Uh, we have another jam-packed uh, podcast with us uh, today. Uh, so we're not going to try and take too much time with uh, e meandering like I'm doing right now. So <laughs> let's get into the news. Um, we would like to start kind of discussing uh, Microsoft's new rebranding of uh, Bing Search to officially Microsoft Bing. Um, light news on that. We also okay. have. And then I'll get into my Surface Duo review. I've had it for the last three and a half weeks now, probably around three weeks. So. I'll give you some of my thoughts and my review. Uh, and we'll also talk about some issues that are, people are having with Surface Duo uh, cracking near the USB-C port. And we'll also talk about that bug smashing update that everyone has been waiting for. Uh, on top of that, we'll also be, hint, we'll be discussing uh, xCloud information uh, and kind of uh, a new workaround that might be in the works for, for Apple or Apple users, uh, iOS users or whatnot. And then, obviously, we have our special segment, uh, The Week Ahead, where we talk about some news that we think will be coming out of Microsoft in the coming week ahead. Uh, but uh, let's get right, let's jump right in. Uh, we don't want to keep you guys waiting. So Kareem will kick yeah. things off. Yeah, let's talk about the rebrand. Um, you know, for those of you who are still out there using Microsoft, or I mean, Bing Search, uh, I believe there are quite a few of you. Uh, Microsoft has now officially changed it to Microsoft uh, Bing. Um, and what that does is kind of um, bring about uh, full circle of their initiative in August, where they discussed the EV testing, uh, the kind of new logo and new uh, uh, iconography and, and verbiage for it. Um, it seems to, as of last week that it's now been official. It seems like you know mostly everybody that we have anecdotally spoken with and dealt with have seen the change. Uh, again, I don't think there's anything new to the search algorithm. There's not gonna be too much changes to the way that uh, people who advertise on Microsoft uh, Search or, or Bing Search will need to know about. This is purely uh, a streamlined approach to making sure that everything goes from these you know, separate entities you know, businesses that are now just under the Microsoft umbrella. You know, you'll have Microsoft and whatever the product is. They're just so leveraging that. As people like to say, it's just a fresh coat of paint, really. Uh, you might have noticed <laughs> yeah. the, the new logo. It's it's more of a blue, bluish B uh, to line up with the rest of Microsoft's icons that they have, uh, the new Office icons and the new Windows icons. So it's basically them lining up everything, like Kareem said, and making sure that it fits in with the with the rest of the Microsoft family because Bing is isn't really just Bing anymore. Bing Bing powers a lot of the other stuff across Microsoft. Uh, you see it in Windows Search and you see it in Microsoft 365 too. So it's it's great to see Microsoft doing this rebranding and getting it out there that Bing is a part of Microsoft and that uh, it's Microsoft Bing. <laughs> Yeah, and you might have noticed I kept saying Microsoft Search uh, through part of that section. And oh, yeah. to be honest with you, I could imagine in probably you know sometime next year, year after next, that that'll be what will eventually this will eventually be called uh, as they transition people into again thinking of Microsoft as the brand and not an individual product. Um, but again, I don't want to downplay any of the hard work that the team has done. I'm sure that, that we see new features uh, and new tools coming to Search. They can, can continuously bring stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's just as uh, Arif said, it's a name only change as of right now. Yep, but uh, that's boring, right? We don't we don't want to talk, yeah. keep talking about that. Let's get into the yeah. good stuff, which is my S Microsoft Surface Duo review. Yes. So, uh, as you guys, as I said in my as I said in my written article, I spent about three and a half weeks with the Surface Duo now, and it's my lone phone. I did not switch between iPhone or, or my Pixel or any other phone. This was my only phone for the last three weeks. And despite the bad reviews and despite the, the bugs that people reported, I had this as my only phone and I really loved it. 
And as I said in my review, I think it's a new Microsoft phone uh, and it really changed the way that I use my phone. And it's a dual screen phone to love. Yeah, no, um, and he, say, he says despite as though, or, I mean, I think everything has been taken <laughs> anecdotally. There are some people who have had uh, not as good experiences while others have, you know, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag yeah. out there, but the, but, the consensus I mean, has been it's not a it's not really the best phone you could buy right now. But if uh, you, well, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say that I think the consensus overall has been um, for a Gen One product. Uh, there's a lot left to be to be addressed. Uh, mm -hmm. Fortunately, most of it's in software. Um, you know, when reviews first came out, it's been you know everyone's kind of raved about the hardware. Uh, and, you know, for the most part, that could be the hardest thing for, for phones, especially for a company who has been out of phones for about four and a half, five years uh, to come back on their first go, or I guess, relatively first go around and nail the hardware. So, um, like we said, really, yeah. really, really, as you're saying, Microsoft has been out of the phone business for four and a half, five years. So this kind of is really a phone for like the fanboys and the ultra Microsoft fans who know how to use the phone and who know its true purpose, really. So that's something that I try to touch on in my review is I talked about not only the hardware and the way it feels like this is a very impressive phone. It, it's very thin and it's light. I've never felt anything like this before, not, not on a Pixel, not on an iPhone, not on any other Android phone. It's super thin and it's super light. And the hinge and separating the two screens like that makes it set it apart from a Z Fold or any, or any other phone out there on the market right now. But the thing is, what I try to focus my review on is the experience and the experience of using those two screens and using it in all those different modes. I know maybe Kareem can touch on it a bit about how, the, how this phone is being used by people. Yeah, um, you know, like we said, um, for those who are thriving with it, they found the niches that work in their life. Um, I think it should be said that, again, at the end of the day, for anybody who's questioning a dual purchase um, that aren't, you know, sold on it as um, significantly as, as Arif had been, uh, it's an Android device at the end of the day. Um, it will run your Android apps. Uh, gestures uh, are going to be a bit different just because you're dealing with two different screens. Uh, but you will also, you know, have the apps that you need. So you're not going to, it's not too foreign. You'll figure out how to get there. Um, and like I said, for those people who um, already have the device, uh, what they've been doing is they find, you know, it's useful for gaming, it's useful mm -hmm. for reading, it's useful for wasting time, even though, you know, <laughs> Microsoft sells it as a productivity device at this day and age. Uh, everyone keeps saying like, you know, hey, um, I don't need just a productivity device. I need an all around device. And realistically speaking, again, it's an, it's basically two Android phones. Um, at the end of the day, it's really nice, well put. Um, so if you can handle an Android phone, uh, even if you're coming from an iPhone, um, again, Android has 99.9% of the same apps uh, iOS users have. Um, some of the development and, and, and uh, style of those apps may be in question, but they're there. Uh, and, you know, for everyone who was kind of wondering about um, waterproofing and you know wireless charging and some of these other things, I felt like those were kind of in context of us using the device the way we used to use things, but also missing the point that we're no longer doing that. That you know it was kind of judged really all over the place. You know people kept saying um, that we don't need a project this this much productivity on the go because we're at home, but they're also saying I need uh, waterproofing and I need uh, wireless charging I'm like well you don't really for most of us we don't need wireless charging when we're at home so you have to that's, kind of think about this kind of things in context when you're judging it so that's that's something that i did focus on on my, on my review i'm like i don't really need this what what i need my phone for is to to basically scroll instagram and and twitter and and check my my team's feed and, and stuff like that and if you're looking at just that the, the processor inside, like I said in my review, the Snapdragon 855 with six gigs of RAM, it's it's more than good enough to stuff. You don't need like 12 gigs of RAM 
just just to scroll Instagram and Facebook and and all that kind of thing. But I digress with that. My point is that the way the duo is like since it has these two screens, like you have different ways of using your phone that you don't get with just a standard candy bar phone. Uh, specifically with the duo, there's a different couple of modes. There's a compose mode where you hold it like a laptop, and then uh, there's landscape mode where you could hold it vertically, like uh, say like a tablet. And then there's sk- single screen mode where you fold it over like this and you hold it like a regular candy bar phone. And then there's a tent mode where you fold it over at, like a Windows 2-in-1 and you sit it on your desk like this. And you can, like Karim was saying, you could game or you could watch your videos or or do or basically any any entertainment scenarios. So out of all those modes, I really like the the dual screen mode, which I like to call book mode, where you get to stack your apps side by side and do two things at once. Like like I keep repeating myself, you have Twitter on one screen and you have Instagram on another. You don't know, you don't really experience the dual until you do that. It really blows your mind open to be able to to multitask like that and have two apps open side by side. And you especially, your mind gets blown when you open apps that support the spanning, which is you hold the app in the middle and then it expands across both screens. I, I believe the Kindle app is set for this. So if you open Kindle and you drag it to the middle and hold it right here at the hinge, it'll give you, uh, it'll open up like a book and then you turn in the corners and it actually moves like a book. Like seeing that on a phone was mind blowing to me. Yeah, I think again, um, they could probably do well with um, reiterating the gestures even after a dismissal the first time around. I know there uh, there's several pieces of software, uh, which I think off the bat um, that you know. Oh, um, I use uh, Google Ads in my daily work. And uh, it's constantly reminding me, you know, even when I start a new campaign, like here's where you go to kind of do these things. Mm-hmm. And it's always, you know, having new tips and tricks to kind of do that. And I think uh, the deal will be served well to do that and make sure, you know, because I know a lot of people rushed into dismissing all of the gesture information and navigation exactly. just to get into it, assuming that exactly. it's you know, like a regular Android device. And then, you know, maybe they forgot or they got frustrated or maybe the software was, but uh, if people knew you know, if you slide your finger down the middle of the screen, that it has a new gesture that's different than a regular Android device. And then, you know, if you just keep reminding people, you know, and give them uh, the opportunity to kind of get familiar with it, uh, then I think those, a lot of those issues that people were kind of, you know, having with the duo early on um, that were attributed to jankiness, while it may have just been difference, uh, could go away. Uh, But with that being said, let's get to more of your review about the details about um battery life like you know again we said all these great things about uh borrowing the the software and we'll talk about the update in a second but what were you seeing as far as you know just using in the device i know it's two screens it's you know uh oled and you know uh, there's still power issues uh associated with the capacity of the battery what were you getting uh daily as i said in my review battery life is something that's not really objective because everyone uses their phone differently but for me, I, I wake I up know, at like... I you using Twitter and Instagram, but I feel like a lot of people do that. It, yeah, but I wake up at like 8 o'clock in the morning uh, for work, and then I go to bed Slacker. at like 10, 30, <laughs> 11. And, and my, my phone is... The duo lasted me more than enough to get me through that, to, to get me through that day, which is 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. If I charge it to 100% overnight, and then I take it off in the morning... It'll be by at twenty percent by like ten thirty. So I would say I got a full day at around five to six or four to five of screen hours of of screen on time. So to me, it, the battery life isn't really bad. It just depends on how you use your phone. And no, having two screens does not impact the battery life. It's the well, same. And- it's the same as what you would get on a Pixel or an iPhone, if you ask me. Interesting. And the other thing I had a question about, too, is, you know, we were just discussing the practicality of people's lives being you know, altered because of COVID. I know um, on a lot of stage, 
things are kind of getting back to normal. So people are, are starting to venture, you know, venture out of their homes on a more regular basis. But, um, you know, the, the cries for wireless charging, I thought, were, a little, again, a little misplaced. It seemed like, you know, it's a yes. feature everyone likes to, to tout. But uh, not only is wireless charging slower than fast charging, and I know the deal has a bit of fast charging, but uh, maybe part of the reason people were asking for wireless charging is because our next issue, which is the USB-C ports. Um, oh, yeah. Have you people, had issues with yours? People said, I mean, I have my dual right here, so I'll try and show it to the camera. People said that right here uh, next to above the USB-C port starts cracking if they cr- they're constantly pulling the charger in and out, in and out, in and out. And they said that it cracks because the duo is so thin right here. And this part is made of uh, composite material, not plastic. But I've been careful with my duo uh, 100%. I treat my electronics really good. So I've not had that issue. But it's been a problem on, on the Surface Duo subreddit. A couple, I'd, I'd say like five or six people have been reporting that they've had this issue around the breaking around the USB-C port. But it's not something I personally had. Maybe it's a qu- quality control from Microsoft, I guess, or maybe these people just got lemons. <laughs> I mean, it's I, I don't want to uh, downplay anybody's actual experience, especially when you pay fourteen hundred dollars for it. So, yeah. uh, um, you know, it is it is valid. Their complaints are valid. Um, I just would also like to add, though, that uh, I feel that USB-C in general. Uh, devices have had this issue. I know a lot of Macs, if you go to subreddits of Macs, they have issues with the USB-C port uh, getting loose or the uh, portion in the middle breaking because of the, the rigidness on the outside of it. Just, I think the design of USB-C uh, for all intents and purposes was rushed. Um, I, th- I don't know as far as the solution, um, how to fix it, how to go about addressing yeah. this. Uh, in an, in an updated version, but I think the way that USB-A was developed with uh, a three-part breakdown into the prongs itself was useful. Uh, USB-C, while offering thinness and a smaller port, um, I feel is also suffering from that. And again, it's just not, I don't think it's just Surface devices. I think a lot of, uh, I think uh, the Nexus had an issue with that. The pixel, A lot of Pixel owners, you can go and get subreddits for Pixels, and they have issues with uh, USB-C ports, and it's just the wear and tear of this particular design um, for a lot of devices. So, and I think uh, Microsoft's own dual uh, device exacerbates that issue because it is super thin. One more thing I do want to talk about on the Duo, uh, as I keep discussing in my review, is the camera. A lot of people have <laughs> yeah. have, have I really we should dedicate crit- a whole show to just the camera. Criticize the camera because they're they're like, oh, it's it only it doesn't have laser autofocus. It's only PDAF, so the photo quality isn't the greatest, and you have to do the the weird flipping of this and this to to take your photos, but. Personally, in three and a half weeks with the Duo, it hasn't been a problem for me. I mean, I've used it for Instagram and Snapchat, and I went out, I took photos of skyscrapers and and stuff with it, and the photo quality has been decent in in bright lights and in daylight and outdoors, but in low light situations, it's not the best. But that's not anything that Google Photos or Photoshop can fix. Uh, I've have I've had no problems with the camera. I actually like it. Yeah, I um I wrote a piece last week about um how useful uh you know the the mega megapixel race has been. It was kind of an, a piece uh, that piggybacked off a conversation The Verge had with um uh, Google's former uh, uh pixel photographer guru. Um, he sat down with Neilai and they discussed, you know, just the limits uh, or the diminishing returns for megapixels. And he, th- I think he said that 12 megapixels was basically the sweet spot. And after that, you know, it was just the uh, diminishing returns on what a sensor can do. And that's why he, you know, is partly intrigued about this new idea of a universal camera app that he's working with, with Adobe. Um, and so uh, I wrote about, you know, that, because of the thinness and coming out of the gate nailing the design, it's going to be really hard for Microsoft to kind yeah, of 
That's true. Backtrack with a hump or a bump or whatever they call it to kind of uh, fix it hardware wise. But uh, there is hope because, again, with a 12 megapixel camera that Google has been using for the last three and a half years, they've been yeah, you know, fun. using um, machine learning to, to come up with amazing solutions. And uh, there's been talk about this new uh, Camera Go app on a Duo, and me and Kareem, we were chatting about it on Teams, and I believe that if Microsoft patches the camera software, the photo quality that people have been complaining about will improve, because if you could patch it in Google Photos, I'm pretty sure there's something in the AI or in the background that be, can be patched with the camera software that would also improve the quality of the photos too. Well, I mean, you have Azure and, you know, you have Nadella going everywhere, anywhere you can <laughs> talk about machine learning. Like, that's his catchphrase. So if they could tweak the uh, server-side processing and get you the same way I see this amazing stuff happen on my Pixel, where I take a snapshot and I look at it and I'm like, oh, my God, this looks horrible. <laughs> but within two seconds, I get the processing ring and I get this amazing photo out of it. Something, I, you know, when I took the photo itself, I was like, this looked great. After, before it's processed, it looks like mush. As it's getting processed, I can see all the fixes that Google's going through. And I believe that's the kind of thing that Microsoft could benefit from. Again, having already, you know, I would assume maxing out the space uh, capacity for, for a lens in there, if they could start to get some of that machine learning going using Azure, um, then, you know, people who own this first version of the Duo could see amazing photos next year and you, it, it can only go up for, you know, next iterations of the duo. And, um, you know, and we don't have to worry about a hunk <laughs> camera bump or adding a camera on the outside or any of this other stuff. There's hope. There's lots of hope. Yeah. Um, but, you know, with that being said, hope isn't what you pay for for $1,400. So uh, in your um, overall opinion, should people who are used to pixels uh, used to the iPhone camera, still be considering the Duo. I don't see and this why is just not. Camera related. I don't. I don't see why not. I think. It, I think it's great for all the reasons that all the reasons that I outlined in my review. It's it's a phone that's quite different per se, especially in terms of the camera, as you were saying. But if you're if you're into having all the latest tech and having experimental tech. And having something that's just so different that when you when you're in public and when you're using it, someone will be like, "What is that? What are you? What is that phone? I've never seen that phone before." And you're you're proud to show it off and explain how it works. Then yeah, go buy this. It's for you. All right, you heard it from Arif himself. So you guys take your photos. If you don't like them, send them to Arif and he will Photoshop and fix them for you for the lack of the camera for the duo. Hey, hey, it's something that people already do on Snapchat and Instagram anyway. They take a picture of their food, and, and what do they do? They swipe through the filters, and hmm, is this one right? Hmm, is this one right? So I don't see w <laughs> taking the extra step of going into Google Photos and just pushing the adjust button. I mean, it's not that hard to, to do. Yeah, well, and you also <laughs> said that um, the Duo uses photos as... Um, the default Google app. Photos as, yeah. as a default app, yeah. which is going to be awesome because um, I just uh, got the update on my Pixel and it's got this new amazing kind of interface for adjusting photos. Uh, and if, you know, obviously if, if Microsoft is using that as default, I think a lot of people are going to be pretty happy with that, that camera photo experience. But any, anyway, I, I got I went overboard uh, too excited talking about my Duo review, but and I completely stepped out on the fact that the Duo got its first software update since uh, it was launched it back in back a, a month ago, and this mm -hmm. update is the one that everyone has been waiting for, and the update patches a lot of the the stability issues and the bugs that people have been complaining about, especially in terms of the camera and uh, the orientation and the flipping of the screens and turning it backwards and, uh, and a lot of those problems. Uh, it weighed in at, at, I think, around 111 megabytes or so. So it's a quick download. And once you install it, it, it really patches up the Duo and it makes it feel a lot faster uh, if, uh, if you've had uh, bugs. I, I called it a bug squashing update because I liked it. I think it fixed a lot of the problems and complaints 
a lot of people have had with the duo before when it launched. Yeah, um, yeah, that is, I think, one of just similar to like the Pixel. Uh, I think Microsoft said they're going to be kind of doing these um, large updates, you know, for the foreseeable future. Um, you know, and just like you know, with Windows, I'd expect these things to come in monthly. Maybe a, you know, we'll start seeing what do we call uh, our Tuesday updates for Patch them. Tuesday. Uh, I think on and I think on Android it's monthly updates and Microsoft did commit to three years of updates for the duo. So and they said in their last uh, their patch patch notes that they're listening to feedback. So they're listening to people's complaints and I believe that every month, along with the routine Android security updates, they'll release patches that fix the bugs that people have been reporting about. Because I it's interesting that this update came out this month and i know that uh with pixel 5 and the 4 was it 4 5g or the 4 a 5g that are coming out that we're going to be having android 11 finally hit devices uh you know samsung will probably stagger theirs but um i know that with android 11 we're supposed to get support for dual screens uh foldable screens and things of that nature so I wonder if some again some more of that jankiness that we're seeing with uh, apps not being able to kind of span or find their orientation on these new screens will start to get fixed with that or if Microsoft has an update in November that will address all of that as well and, and again make it even more buttery smooth if that's possible. It's pretty much uh, you buy the phone now and it's not like you buy it and you're done. Microsoft is committed to the Duo. There'll be updates, there'll be fixes, and there'll be patches. So if you buy the Duo now, you might have a bug or you might have an issue or two. And if you you have to basically live with it, uh, find your way around it. Like the camera issues, you could patch, like I said, with Google Photos. And then be hopeful and Microsoft will have an update or two to fix whatever you've been complaining about. Yeah. Um... Or you can do what my my plan is as of right now is uh wait it out, wait it out. I was gonna say I was gonna maybe upgrade to a pix the new pixel, uh, which will again save me money because it's so much cheaper, and just wait out the fixes. Uh, I mean, there's no reason that people can't pick up a duo in December or January or February and uh, get the experience that you know they want right out of the box. Nothing on the duo right now is device breaking. The minute you set it up and you install the updates. It's it's smooth. Everything works. No performance issues. Nothing. I've I did not experience any app crashes, any any device breaking bugs, any freezes. Nothing major that made me want to throw it out the damn window. It 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 <laughs> it, it, it works fine day to day. You'll have an occasional glitch or two, but it's nothing that that's device breaking. It's exactly. nothing that's is perfect. Just... You have to live with with an issue or two every day. I still get I still get Android issues uh, with like Instagram on on my Pixel, and it's just as you and I discuss, it's a app caching issue. Exactly. Whatever that means. Okay. Uh, but I mean, with that being said, um, I mean you can go read the review. You can also uh, check out Kip's uh, uh, Galaxy uh, Z Fold um, initial impressions and stuff, and kind of weigh the two. If you're again uh, sitting in the camp of do I get a Fold two or do I get a Duo? Um, read Eric's words, uh, view his experience <laughs> if it matches yours, uh, read Kips, and I believe he's going to have a review soon as well, um, and, and measure the two. Maybe we'll have them uh, kind of co co uh, write a, a comparison one as well, um, just again, so everyone has as much information as they need going into this purchase. So enough about the duo. Let's, let's move on to Fair Xbox. Uh, uh, let's move on to Xbox news. There are some rumors floating around that uh, Xbox might come, X, not Xbox, X Cloud game streaming might come to iPads via a web browser. And uh, cloud gaming uh, for X Cloud might also come to Windows PC and Xbox in the future. Yeah, and we had this discussion uh, just off mic a little bit ago about the difference between uh, X Cloud gaming and Xbox gaming. Xbox game, game um, streaming, yeah. Yeah, on the PC. Um, because again, as of now, there's Xbox game streaming, uh, which require you to have your Xbox on and have the device within uh, Wi-Fi distance of it and kind of stream 
um, the game from the box itself. I mean, you can do it upstairs. You can do it in a bathroom if you wanted to. You can do it, but it has to be the device has to be on and be around. The X Cloud will allow you to take your PC, go to uh, a family member's house, or go away and pull that same game from the cloud, so you're not restricted to the hardware. Um, and that's a big deal for uh, iOS users, especially in light of this whole uh, issue that Microsoft had with uh, trying to get it on uh, as an app on iOS devices. It seems like the new workaround um, is web-based. Um, again, we don't know how or if Apple will try and stop that because, again, there will be purchases associated with this, um, and you know they want their cut. But as of now, the rumor is that this could be a solution, um, and we'll have to wait and see uh, if it becomes a reality, though. I think I think uh, Phil Spencer was telling employees internally that they're looking into doing this web-based thing, web-based xCloud for iOS. And they did say uh, the rumor is that it might be coming around 2021. So it's another one of those hold your breath and wait moments. Well, and I, I wonder if, if they're going to be doing it that way for iOS, why, why not just do that in general for all devices, you know, if, it, if it's just a browser location you go to, I mean, there's no reason other than, you know, maybe some GPU associated animations with the app itself. There's no reason that you need a dedicated Windows 10 app. Uh, you know, people should be able to go to this place on as far as you go to place on Chrome and pull this down. Um, so I'm wondering, um, how, you know, how they're going to go about this. That's all. Which brings us into our next topic, which is related because right now xCloud is only available on Android uh, uh, via the app, obviously. So we're, we're, there's been a lot of talk that maybe Microsoft might consider bringing this to Windows. Also, uh, it was said uh, in a tweet, Phil Spencer said that, yes, that they're considering bringing xCloud also to PCs and Xbox consoles. So pretty Microsoft is looking to line itself up and have xCloud on iOS, Android, and Windows devices too. Well, it feels like a no-brainer. I mean, it seems almost like a slap in the face to Windows users that Android gets that experience when you know Microsoft is constantly talking about PC as a platform and PC being synonymous with Windows. Um, so it, it was a bit of a head scratcher for them not to already have this in place for uh, Windows 10 uh, or Windows in general. Um, so again, if their solution is to test it, because they had they had the allowances on Android through the app, would eventually do a web-based one for everybody. That makes more sense. Um, it'll just, like I said, it'll be interesting to see how they bring it to Windows 10 um, and in which fashion. I think it'll be via a web browser, just like they're thinking about iOS. So maybe we'll see it next year. It'll be nice to have xCloud on like a Surface Pro X where you have the LTE and you could go anywhere in the world and enjoy your Xbox games or even on the Duo too. Well, uh, it already works on the Duo, but uh, I mean like taking a Surface Pro tablet and, and enjoying xCloud anywhere you go, it would be pretty sweet. Yeah, it gives an added benefit to people like me who are using, uh, I have a, a Surface Go that I use constantly. Um, that little device is amazing and it'll have um, added value. I mean, at some point, I think in like, you know, 10 years or so, that Microsoft's Xbox division, Xbox hardware just becomes Surface devices at some point. Uh, you buy yourself a Surface Go, you buy yourself a Surface Pro X, Surface Pro, whatever, and it essentially is your, you know, um, new Xbox. And speaking of Xbox and Surface, there's a certain company which is pretty popular that just made a his not a historic but a big deal with Microsoft, right? Yeah, yeah, I wrote about this as well. Uh, right towards the end of the week, we get news about this GameStop uh, deal with Microsoft, uh, and I was thinking like, oh, this is going to be, you know, they're they've muscled their way into uh, the, the showroom floor <laughs> and kind of will we'll have boxes everywhere, and big displays and saying buy Xbox Series X versus, you know, the PlayStation 5. And it was much more mundane than that. It is a um, uh, enterprise infrastructure deal, uh, as Microsoft has been wanting to do for, uh, you know, the last so many years where they go in and basically give companies um, this whole Microsoft suite of, of hardware and software tools 
to upgrade uh, their business. You know, these people that work at GameStop now will now be uh, getting Microsoft 365. They'll be getting uh, service devices to kind of run everything. They'll be uh, giving, you know, uh, Microsoft Teams and uh, Dynamics 365 to kind of upgrade their uh, their business. Uh, and, you know, obviously be using Outlook and a bunch of things. So that's, it's a multi-year deal to basically revamp um, GameStop's enterprise uh, business. This is a this is pretty big because GameStop is huge. It's not just like you're a, a small company. Microsoft is already in bed per se with a lot of Fortune 500 companies who use Teams, who use Azure, who use Microsoft 365. So now they have yet another big partner on board with them to use their products. Yeah, um, like I said, uh, as much as I wanted to be more about gaming, this is a business play. Uh, but I did make note of how interesting it'll be that in the midst of GameStop, essentially what I've, I've been reading about and writing about is contracting how Microsoft, and partly in in light, in due, partly because of the way Sony and Microsoft are kind of uh, revamping this uh, gaming age, you know, again, what pushes towards diskless devices, it kind of uh, nullifies GameStop's uh, third party uh, really uh, retail business model. Uh, and and the pandemic has also exacerbated this issue as well. So, you know, GameStop is also closing a lot of businesses, a lot of stores, a lot of employees are being let go. Uh, as we speak, um, I know that um, after the news came out, they had a kind of bump in their stock prices and sales. Uh, so, you know, people are, are confident uh, with this deal. I just wonder how Microsoft is going to toe the line of essentially encroaching on GameStop's business model while keeping them afloat so that they can maintain them as a partner. It's pretty good news for GameStop heading into the future. It is, it is. I just, again, I, I, I'm waiting to see how they pivot their business structure to, again, to stay relevant, stay alive, uh, as you know, more people find reasons to buy the Xbox Series X or S and the Disless uh, PlayStation uh, 5, because again, my, uh, GameStop makes the, a lot of their revenue uh, on um, reselling these discs um, and you know whole housing these areas, I know they've gotten into you know selling you know toys and uh, Funko Pops and things like that. Um, but I, I wonder where their business goes in the future and how you know Microsoft keeps them as a partner and keeps them happy, keeps them growing, while simultaneously chopping away at that business model. Well, that that segues us in. That's a perfect segue for our week ahead segment which is something we've been waiting to hear about from Microsoft for a while, is uh, Windows 10 X. We haven't really heard them say much about it for the last few months, but recently we saw uh, the Windows 10 X out-of-box experience is supposedly hidden in one of the recent Windows Insider builds. So maybe we're thinking that in the week ahead or in the months ahead, because we're closing in towards the end of the year, Maybe Microsoft might start talking about bringing Windows 10X features to regular Windows 10, and this out-of-box experience might be the start of it. Yeah, I mean, for those of you who are hopeful, I'm not going to lie to you. I've given up on Windows 10X um, <laughs> only because I'm an impatient individual. I, I want, as an insider, and especially on the dev channel, I want these new features. I want to be playing around with it and, and seeing, you know, even breaking my own devices to just be a part of whatever this Windows 10 X experience is going to be. And it seems like we've been talking about it for a year now and we've seen, you know, nothing really materialize. And so while this out of box experience rumor and kind of hinting at is, you know, maybe encouraging for those people, uh, I have also come to the realization that we have the duo that runs Android. We have Windows uh, 10, Windows 10 S, which is, you know, the, the Chrome OS competitor. I don't see where Windows 10X fits in all of this now. I mean, I was speaking with Kip, you know, um, last week, so I saying, I believe they'd be better off shelving this idea of Windows 10X and just refining the emulation layer for uh, ARM devices. Like, I feel like that's where they need to focus, and that's basically, you know, their their future. Windows 10X, I don't, I don't see where they go with this. You're, you're right, because 10X was supposed to be for the Neo, and the Microsoft basically wiped all existence of the Neo off their website and off YouTube. They pulled the trailer for it, and they removed the mention of it 
from their holiday uh, 2020 website or whatever it was. So Windows 10X was supposed to be for these dual screen devices. And as Kareem and I have been saying for the last couple of weeks, we're in the middle of a global pandemic and people don't necessarily want to spend all that money on a brand new dual screen PC. So maybe 10X is something that Microsoft has on the shelf for now. And maybe they just want to slowly test the features out with people with regular insiders so that's that's where i think it personally i think that's where it's going they have it on the shelf but they're slowly trickling down what could have been over to what would be yeah i mean i'm always anxious to try something new so uh i'll, I'll wait and see when we get that um again we got our fingers crossed for that uh we also will be talking and seeing stuff about um you know talking about new stuff uh new things coming in edge oh um, edge know. is always fun to talk about yeah yeah so we got um a new price checker that's being uh hinted at and kind of rolling on i believe in ab testing is uh right now i think um, i think that price checker the feature is now part of collections and it's rolling out so like uh, for holiday shopping if you have say you add like a, a page with a surface on it and it has it for 9.99 uh, and you add another page uh, with Best Buy, the the collections feature will now monitor the prices for you. So you'll be able to see where it's cheaper and where you could buy that that specific thing at a cheaper price. That's pretty amazing. Um, my wife uh, does a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, digital window shopping. So she'll put tons of stuff in, in carts and kind of come back to it. And I know that I've done it uh, when I go to price check stuff. I'm looking for a new set of headphones right now. And I get these updates, uh, uh, you know, it's almost becoming spam level from eBay, but it's useful to see like, hey, you know, you put this in your cart two weeks ago, the price has gone up or down on it. Uh, and if this uh, new Windows checker or this price checker for collections does something similar to that, uh, it's going to be a hit. I mean, people, like you said, people are going into holiday season where people are going to be shopping and shipping stuff too. That's another component that people need to kind of take into account. And if they can, you know, open up their browser on the Duo, <laughs> open up a couple pages and see like, hey, things have changed since the last time I put it in a cart. Uh, I think it's gold. I think it's good. It's just something that's always evolving for Microsoft. It's no longer tied just to the featured updates. So it's getting tons of updates. So we think that moving forward, you might see more features coming out of Canary or Dev with these uh, for Edge. Yeah. So keep an eye out for that. Um, I believe that's we've come to the end of our uh, list of things to talk about, at least for now, uh, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> we went on a lot about the Duo today, but that's that's what everyone wants to hear. Yeah, again, people love hardware, and uh, as more hardware comes in, I know that uh, we're looking to see if we can get our, our, our hands on some of the new Surface stuff to kind of talk about and, and review, so we can get some initial impressions. We got uh, Xbox stuff. Um, that should be coming up as well. Um, so, uh, again... We'll always have hardware to talk about, but uh, today was uh, a good day for reviews and a good day for some software news. Yep. Uh, thank you for everyone. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, any final words? No. Um, again, I say the same things is uh, stay <laughs> safe, enjoy your time with people, um, wear a mask, and uh, you know, try and stay positive. No more doom scrolling through Twitter, <laughs> even if you have two screens. Take a break. Uh. All right, everyone. Yes. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching and see you again same place next week. Enjoy your week.